How do you do? I hope the volume's better. I can't remember if it was the last time or the time before when it was low, low, low. Chapter 8. <clears throat> it's some cold. Not now. Cozy. Turns out our actual in-flight checklist looks something like this. Number one, consume inordinate amounts of French bubbly check. <laughs> Two, read through case files and plan our end of investigation. And <laughs> there's a line there. I think we can all see where I went wrong. The upside is a Dreamliner 787 flies a lot more smoothly than a de Havilland Devon 8. So there's no repeat motion sickness incident. I've decided to declare the Chicago Phoenix leg of our journey as my official first flight. Even though it's been less than a year since I ran out on my underwhelming life in Arizona I'd already forgotten the heat as Eric wheels my bag toward the rental car counter he licks his lips desperately it's such a dry heat here it kind of reminds me of Afghanistan not in a good way I'd never make light of his service to his country but his comment begs the question are you saying you actually have good memories of Afghanistan he shrugs. Fair question, but yeah, obviously the guys and I served with were like brothers to me, so there's that. But there were also a few times when we actually got leave and had the opportunity to enjoy local food and meet the people we were protecting. I won't wax poetic or political. There's a saying about war being hell for a reason, but there'll always be a warm place in my heart for those local people who welcomed and supported us. Nodding silently, I step into the serpentine queue in front of the counter. We've talked about the guys he lost over there before, and it was a difficult discussion for both of us. Now that my feet are on the ground in the desert, the emotions surrounding my mother's untimely death are bubbling too near the surface. I can't risk engaging in any heartfelt banter right now. The line moves faster than I would have imagined, and by the time we got to the front and the clerk hands me the keys to a convertible Mustang, Eric is all smiles. He pushes his driver's license and his credit card across the counter. Hey, buddy, I'm definitely going to need you to add me on as an additional driver. Chuckling, I place two fingers on the key ring and slide it across the counter toward the adorable man boy. I have no problem with the chauffeur, Sheriff. The clerk's eyes immediately snap up. He looks back and forth between Eric and me. Excuse me, or... Are you law enforcement, sir? From out of state, we're just visiting Arizona. Oh, well. Welcome to the Grand Canyon State, sir. We support our law enforcement and would be happy to offer you our law enforcement discount. Do you have your badge, sir? I pretend to rub my forehead so that I can roll my eyes behind my hand. Punk Kid is reciting his speech as though he's reading it off a painfully slow teleprompter. Fortunately, Eric is a far more patient human being than me. Thanks. He opens his wallet to reveal his badge and pushes it toward the attendant. The, Kirk, the clerk gazes at the badge. Burke County? What state's that in, sir? My shoulders sag, and I could feel my feet getting ready to run. Eric smiles. That's on a need-to-know basis, son. You don't need to know. The color drains out of the poor lad's face. Of course, sir, I'm sorry. My psychic senses catch a dose of Eric's suppressed amusement. He spins the keys back and forth around the index finger of his left hand while he waits for the young man to make the addition. All set, sir. I've applied the discount and given you an extra day for free. Please enjoy your stay in the great state of Arizona.
his poorly delivered monotone speech. He finally comes to an end and he shuffles through some papers on the counter. Will you be needing a map, sir? And I've officially come to the end of my rope. I used to live here, kid. I got this. Yes, ma'am. He didn't know. As we walk away from the counter, Eric snickering begs to be addressed. I'm not sure why, why, what you find so amusing, Harper. That kid called me ma'am. He's probably like a year younger than me, ma'am. Wait till I tell. Eric leans toward me. Your cat? I whisk his comment away with a flick of my wrist. You don't know me. After he backs the Mustang out of the parking space, he, prompts the ex he romps the accelerator a couple of times. Listen to that beauty purr. If you say so. Oh, I do. Now, will we be staying at the Ritz-Carlton, or did you buy a house? Rude. I exhale and select a vague response. We're staying at a decent hotel in a nice neighborhood. I tap the information into my phone and swipe up the GPS. Everything's going swimmingly until we get our turn at the concierge desk. She runs a perfectly manicured finger down the screen. Miss Moon, Miss Moon, are you sure it's for this location? We do have three hotels in the Phoenix metro area. Without verbally answering, I flick through my email confirmations and call up the one for the hotel. Turning my phone toward her, I smile in what I will admit is a mean girl not actual smile oh the reservations are under harper seems very 1950s to put the reservation under the man's name even though the woman is paid i want to say she taps her collagen injected lips with her teal blue nail oh dear eric gives me a little nudge with his hip and moves in front of the woman what seems to be the problem? <clears throat> when she looks up from the screen and sees his handsome smiling face staring back at her, instead of my frowny lips, she seems very pleased. Oh, you must be Mr. Harper. He gives her that crooked grin that always makes me want to confess all my sins and even some I haven't committed and says, I don't think they're paying you enough. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry to report that we only have the one room left. My pulse races and I'm desperate to avoid the prospect of spending two weeks in a hotel room with Eric. I'm not that strong, all right? I want to take things slow. I want to do it right this time. But if I have to see that gorgeous man with a towel wrapped around him for the next 14 days, even the Virgin Mary would lose control. Eric must sense my frustration. Well, that is a problem. Are you sure you can't move anything around? He lets his wallet accidentally fall open on the desk and her eyes flick to his shiny gold badge. It's just that I can't. I can't cancel other reservations. I could get fired. He casually closes his wallet. Nobody wants that to happen, but you must have a suite or something that you keep on hand in case a VIP guest shows up. Since someone here bungled our reservation, I was hoping he leans down on the counter in his citrusy wood smell wafts over the counter there was something you could do for me she blushes and giggles well there's she leans closer to him and my first involunt she leans closer to him and my fist involuntarily clenches i'm not supposed to say anything but there was a rumor that jennifer lopez might be checking in this weekend but you know what I'm sure it's an internet hoax. I'll put you in the Frida Halo suite. 
I guess I'm saying that right. Eric smiles pleasantly. I sure do appreciate it. If J Lo shows up, you just let us know. She gasps. We're not allowed to walk about. No, we're not allowed to talk about our VIP guests. I could get fired. I don't even bother to cover my face as I roll my eyes. <laughs> That's a major eye roll. How many keys will you be needing, Eric? He steps back, slips an arm around my shoulders, and replies, two should be enough. She manages to simultaneously smile flirtatious at, flirtatiously at him and glare at me. Girl's got skills. On the 19th floor, we soon discover that while the Frida Kahlo suite is enormous, it only has one bedroom. However, there is a pull-out sofa, which Eric assures me will be more than adequate for his sleeping needs. Well, this day has been nothing if not interesting. You unpack and take first crack at the shower. I need to make a few phone calls and touch base with my contact at the Maricopa Sheriff's. It's just a good way to let the locals know you're in their jurisdiction. I nod and drag my large suitcase into the bedroom. As soon as I hear the voice on the phone, I close the bedroom door and dial headquarters back in Pincherry. The camera on the other end bursts to life into my deep satisfaction. I can see Ghost Ma swirling back and forth. Grams, I can see you. She freezes with an arm in frame. Mitzi, I hear you. I can't see you, though. I think Piwak had turned off the camera thingy when he answered. I glanced down at my phone. No, it's me. Hold on. Tapping the camera access on my phone, I'm rewarded with Graham's gleeful gasp. Ah. Ah, you lived. What? You didn't expect me to survive the flight? I know it sounds strange, dear. I've flown hundreds of thousands of miles, but I don't trust a huge piece of metal up in the air. I'm so glad you're home. I better go. Eric's in the other room, and I don't want him to catch me talking to a ghost. Meow. A gentle reminder. And a tap. He's in another room. Oh, hang on. You mean you and Eric have separate rooms? Oh, on it. Not exactly. I don't have time to explain. I'll call you later. But you didn't pack the... I knock on the bedroom. A knock on the bedroom door causes me to hit in rapidly. Come in. I'm decent. Hey, are you going to shower? Uh, no. Is that bad? Not at all. I didn't have time to shower before we... <clears throat> <clears throat> before we left the meeting. No. Before we left this morning and wanted to freshen up for dinner. Go ahead. I attempt to gesture nonchalantly toward the massive marble on sweet. I'll watch something on TV. He didn't have time to shower. I risk a whiff of my own post-travel aroma and shake my head with disappointment. He smells that delicious without a shower? Oh, brother, this is going to be the longest two weeks of my life. And that is all. Chapter 8. And my throat has had it. Love y'all. This week you get me. Bye-bye.